Pope of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander and such great names as these. But of all. Hello and welcome to this non-Omni-Mech review of a clan mech. Today we are going to be looking at the Ornid Owl, codenamed Peregrine in the Inner Sphere. Most people don't call it that anymore. And there's an odd situation with a Peregrine also being a well, support helicopter that nobody really used because it was rather terrible. This is another light mech, but this one is really not meant to be used as a scout. It has its own dedicated role and it does Quite a few things rather well, in my opinion. So let's take a look at it. To talk about the Ornid Owl, first we kind of need to talk about militarized industrial mechs. Industrial mechs are a fact of life. You just have them all over the place, even though regular vehicles are still more common on most mid to uh, low tier planets where uh, technology might not be as advanced for production as somewhere else. You can still easily buy things like that uni down there or that cattle master if you're herding pretty big cattle. There's all sorts of mechs that can be useful. Construction sites like to be crawling with them as well, especially smaller ones and uh, power loaders. There's enough industrial mechs out there that you are bound to have seen a couple in life. Industrial mechs builders, however, always really have a desire to move forward in life and to do that, going into the military machine game is usually the way to go. You've got different ways of doing that. Most people uh, know mechs as mods, which are basically what uh, we used to call technicals way back in the days, where you uh, strap on a bunch of machine guns and lasers on a construction vehicle and call it a day. That's one way of doing military equipment with your industrial mechs, but there's also the we actually take an industrial mech and convert it into an actual combat machine like we did here at FRR with the Cattle Master, which is now one of the prime exports of the Oregon Trade Alliance with the Bullfighter. But the Inner Sphere are not the only one doing that. The clans also did for a little while. When the Ordon Owl first showed up in the Inner Sphere, it was already acknowledged that it looked more like an industrial mech, rather a security mech or maybe an industrial underwater construction mech than anything else. When we started digging into records and data sheets that we got from the clans, we managed to figure out that the Ornid Owl was actually used in conjunction with the ancestor of the elemental battle armors as well, for all sorts of underwater work by Clan Goliath Scorpion. Remaining records on that particular machine are limited. I don't think there's any now in production or in use by any organization for that uh, pre ornid Owl mech. But the concept remains the same as most militarized industrial mech. Actually put a fusion engine in, replace the industrial skeleton by something that isn't completely awful, and you might very well have a thing that is going to be rather efficient at a price that's actually pretty good with a production line that's already in place. While nowadays it is relegated to second line duty like boring garrison work, pacification of already conquered planets, Patrols in deep territory, things like this, the Ornid Owl is actually a fantastic basic standard battle mech. At 35 tons, it's at the high end of your light mech range, but it can still get about 97 kilometers per hour using its light force 210 engine. It's basically a pit ban with the serial number filed off. It has an endo steel chassis and 5 ton of the good ferrofibrous armor the clans make. So it has everything that it really needs to be able to survive, move around, but that isn't all. It also has a set of jump jet allowing it to move about 180 meters in a single bounce. And the machine is kept decently cool, depending on the settings and depending on the configuration with double heat sinks. The price per model comes to about 3.5 million reserve currency of your choice. That's the production price. You're going to have to add all the other things on top of it, like delivery and the uh, margins that need to be made. But it's not anything that's hard or expensive to manufacture. And it's still being built in the home world. At least last we had contact with the clan home world. And it's built all over the inner sphere as well by Alsheen Weapons. The original Ornid Owl was really built as a raider skirmisher but it can fit other roles as well. It's fast enough 
do serve as a scout if needed, I guess. But in, the clans generally have faster scouts available. One of its biggest advantages is that it can go on extended mission without any additional supplies other than maybe a few plates of armor to fix up what is bunked on. The main weapon of the Ornid Al Mark I is a Colibri Delta series large pulse laser in its center torso and a pair of Colibri medium pulse lasers, one in each arm. You can punch with it because it does have hands. Clans don't like to do that, but still, it is available. It makes it a perfect machine for training, for raiding, fighting in duels like the clans like to do. It just does various things fairly well. Your first separate model came from Clan Smoke Jaguar when they bought a bunch of them, and they wanted a light mobile missile platform. So what they did was stick six 5-rack LRMs on it with four tons of ammo. That's a lot of ammo and a lot of LRMs. It's not going to be the artist hitter out there, but you're going to be able to do quite a bit. With six 5-rack LRM and four tons of ammo, you can have a variety of specialty ammos loaded in. You can have smoke rounds. You can have uh, AR rounds. So you're going to be able to do all sorts of little things. And while it might not punch as hard as, you know, 215 racks, it will have the advantage of being able to control a little bit more how many you want to shoot at one time. Further models included the Mark III, which packed a targeting computer on the Ornit Al with an ERPBC and a set of six light machine guns. Land Smoke Jaguar really didn't like infantry at that point, and there was also the fact that they were rather strapped for resources. It's not a bad machine, once again, but the fact that it's built as both a sniper and an anti-infantry machine makes it a little bit limited, in my opinion. Fengalia Scorpion recovered the factory that built all of those smoke jaguar ornate owls after the jaguars kind of went extinct, and it decided to build two new marks of the machine. The Mark IV is a little bit weird. It carries four advanced tactical missile three tubes and an ER medium laser as a support. It'll be a little bit like that 5-rack LRM version we just talked about. It'll be able to do quite a few little things with that, but it's a little bit less polyvalent, actually, than that 5-rack LRM version, since the LRMs have a variety of specialty ammos that the ATMs don't. ATMs are built to shoot far, medium range, and short range, with more destructive power at each range. It's just a little bit uh, less useful, in my opinion. I'm not the only one who thought that because the clans Goliath Scorpion Warriors didn't really like that version. So they remade another one with a 2ER large laser and a heavy medium laser in the center torso mount. It also doubles as a convection oven because you are going to be sweating in it, but it does have a lot of punch and serve as a better sniper, I think, with those 2ER large lasers. While we don't quite know if the Omeworld clans have done anything with the Ornid Owl at this point, we know that the Inner Sphere clans basically have built two new marks of this through Al Shane. The Mark VI has the same weapon loadout as your Mark I, but the jump jets are taken out and replaced with a targeting computer and a tiny bit little more armor. I'm honestly not sure which one of the two is the better one. I'd have to see a trial between the two on a gun cam, and I haven't seen that yet. I don't think it's a bad setup. I just like the jump jets on a light mech. Your Mark VII is actually completely different, however, from all the other Ornan Owls. This one goes with a smaller engine, a 175, giving it a top speed of about 86 kilometers per hour, but it also mounts a partial wing kit and a targeting computer. So it does jump a little bit further than you would expect for weapon. It has an ER large laser, two medium pulse lasers, and a light tag to be able to spot for artillery. With the wing and everything, it can actually jump 210 meters, so it's actually quite surprising. FRR has been getting all sorts of Ornid Owls over the years. It's one of those mechs that is just, just about everywhere, and both clans and Intersphere customers bring them in for servicing. One thing I have to say is that I kind of wish it was actually an Omni-Mech, especially if you look at all these early marks basically being the same mech with different equipment put on them, just like an Omni-Mech with the various configurations. Now, out before the Coyote, so it just wasn't meant to be an Omni-Mech originally, but I really wish someone would have done an Ordered Owl O or something along those lines. 
for militia work, what we generally do for those machines is we take those Mark 1s that we get in and we take one of those medium pulse lasers out and put a pair of small pulse lasers in. You lose a little bit of firepower, at least at range, with it, but you're going to be able to take out infantry a lot easier with those small pulse lasers. We had a client that came in once as well uh, that had gotten a plasma rifle off uh, Aus Liao. So we stripped out the large pulse laser, put in the plasma rifle in, a little bit of ammo and ER medium lasers in the arm. Pretty decent skirmisher and can be used as an uh, incendiary mech. I think that was a fun thing to do, but I'm not sure if it would be something that uh, a lot of clients would want to get. When you look at both the Inner Sphere and Clan War Machine across the space that we know of, we've got everybody trying to build the most powerful and the most modern and the most fancy Omni-Mech and Battle Mech out there. Things like the Ornate Owl really prove that this is a necessity. You just need a basic model that's able to do what it's supposed to do, that can be produced in very, very large amounts, and that can do the job that it needs to do. We had the same thing with the Mongoose that we talked about a little earlier. And sometimes just building something simple and reliable is what will keep your company in business and will actually make your military something that is a force to be reckoned with. When I prepared this particular presentation, we weren't getting anywhere with the plan to make a Ornid Owl O, but there's financing that came through and we might have a few buyers already, so we might be able to build a factory as well as uh, licensing the device and the design of a Eagle Owl, legally distinct from the Ornid Owl, so Al Shane doesn't get on our ass with a lawsuit, and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to make a killing with that model, and FRR will be able to finance further development in our production lines. So I thank you very much for listening to me for so long today. I hope you guys have a very nice rest of your day, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.